stand on the sapphire stone Come stand on the sapphire stone Just come to me Come stand with me Come into my
represented tonight. May they experience the presence and power, the miracle working power of God. Save the lost, Lord. Bring in the backslider. Set us all on fire for you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, set us on fire. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Traveling with uh, Kevin like we do, we realize that there's only one temperature with God, and that's on fire 24-7, right? And, um, you know, uh, through the years, Kevin would be in, uh, will be in his living room or whatever, and he will say, you know what, the, uh, the body of Christ, you know, at certain times, you know, is more lukewarm than they realize. And, you know, I'm, I always take that personally in a good way. I don't want to ever be lukewarm. I want to live red hot. Uh, you know, how about you? Amen. Well, in just a moment, we're going to take an offering. If our ushers could come forward. In fact, uh, there should have been an envelope on your seat. If you're making a check, you can make it out to Warrior Notes. And there should be a number on your screen if you want to do text to give. But before we take the offering, I want to give a quick heads up that this Monday night at the time of this video, uh, the time we were watching now live, uh, this Monday night we're going to be in Amarillo uh, for one night. And uh, yeah, we love going to Texas, so we'll be there this coming Monday night, one night. There's a little bit of room left, but I tell you, it's going to carry over, I'm sure, from what's going on this weekend. So if you can come to Amarillo, if you're watching, if you're in this uh, audience here and you want to meet us in Amarillo, That'd be great. And then uh, next Friday night, we're going to be in Texarkana. And we have a, a double thing going on there. We're going to have, I, I, I think it's 3 o'clock, 3 or 4 o'clock. We're going to have a prayer time. And uh, Kevin and Kathy or whoever's going to be there with us, we're just going to pray. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do a meeting that night in Texarkana. So if you want to drive up to Texarkana, not too far from here, I don't think. Uh, and... Uh, uh, the, um, you know, it's all south. That's all I think. It's just in the south somewhere. I still don't really know where Texarkana is, to be honest with you. I'll just be there. So um, anyway, uh, if you can be with us Friday night, it's going to be a powerful service. We're only doing a one-nighter there in Texarkana. So come and join us there, especially if you're watching online. And then our last big conference of the year is going to be in the sunny, warm Tampa Bay. <laughs> and so... So if you can make it out for that, that would be wonderful. We're going to be in Tampa Bay. I believe it's the first weekend of uh, December. And so please come in and join us. So we'd love to see you. We love seeing everybody that's here, of course, in Dalton. We love coming here. And then in the next few weeks, you're going to see the new schedule being released for the event starting next year. Kevin, just so you know, in case you were wondering, he's not slowing down in any way whatsoever. And so next year is going to be jam-packed. So... Uh, the new schedule for uh, the next three, four months is going to be of the year is going to be online pretty soon. So, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give, to be a part of this ministry, to be a part of what you're doing. Lord, I know for myself, anywhere you're moving, I want to be a part of that. 
And Lord, we thank you that you are moving at Warrior Notes. We thank you that you're moving in this ministry, Lord. And we see the, sa uh, the uh, sick healed, the lost saved, the backslidden come to you, Lord. The emails that we're seeing of all the people that are getting right with God, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing across the world, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing here in Dalton. And we thank you for what you're going to do in this meeting. Lord, we promise to always give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, ushers. Thank you. Mike. Amen. Whew, I'm excited for this weekend. How about you guys? The King of Kings is ready to change the world through you. Amen. So my name is Pastor Mike. I'm so excited to be with you guys. And I have the privilege of helping Kevin and Kathy with partners and with students. And so I need to see real quick, how many partners do we have here this weekend? All right. Praise God. All right. So let me get another one. How many students do we have here tonight? Play. All right. So we just passed 22,000 students enrolled at Warrior Note School of Ministry. Isn't that incredible? You know, it was Kevin and Kathy's desire in their heart to have a way to disciple and minister to people all over the world. Because people like me, like you, all of us, we have a call of God on our life. And we need to fan that, fan that into the flame of the fire, right? And so we're so excited because between these conferences, between the online courses and everything that's going on, God is raising up a generation that is ready to take the world back for him. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> Amen. So I want to say a special thank you to the partners because you guys are the ones that are helping make all this possible. Um, it's because of you guys, everybody got study guides. There was no charge at the door. And of course, with Kevin and Kathy, there will never be a charge at the door. There's bikes. There's instruments. Kids are going to be going through flight simulators. And all this is because of the partners. So thank you, partners. Yes. I'd clap, but. So we just want to honor you guys and thank you so much. Because you have a part in all the ministry that happens this weekend. And we're super excited because tomorrow we have kids going through level one on the sim. And we have the stealth sim here which we're super excited about that's super cool stuff right i don't know how to use it at all kevin still has to teach me i'm, I'm not good with the flight stuff yet i'm in training i don't even have my my pins yet i'm working on that but we are so excited because this is going to be a powerful weekend it's partners thank you so much students we're so excited that you're here and in case you didn't hear it kevin and kathy just released their newest course days of heaven on earth and it costs nothing. <laughs> When's the last time you had a college give away free credits? I, I don't know that I've ever heard of that before. But that's what Kevin and Kathy like to do. They like to take ministry, flip tables, and give Jesus all the glory. Isn't that awesome? All right, Dr. Kevin Zedai. Okay, thank you all. Okay, are you all ready? Yeah. Amen. Well, we're gonna, uh, whoa. Can you fix that? Okay, I'll give you extra. I still hear it. Hey. Okay, so there, are, how many witches do we have here? <laughs> Is there any witches here? So if you know a witch, please bring them tomorrow, okay? I am not kidding. I want all the witches to come. In fact, we got some good seats up here in front. We'll give you snacks. <laughs> um, I know you're going to fix that, so I'm just going to keep talking. The words, the words that come from heaven are the only words I want to hear. 
And that's been my covenant with God is I want to hear his voice. I want to do what he wants to do. And so I want to know what that is. If I don't know what that is, then I can't do it. But there's a problem down here because Jesus constantly in the book of Revelation said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the to churches. And even when he spoke, he said, if you can understand this, or if you can accept this, remember he used to say these kind of things. This is a clue to what we're dealing with down here. What we're dealing with is you giving instructions to somebody that's three feet away and something happens in that three feet and it never makes it to that person because you've told them three times and they still don't do it. Or they do it wrong. You can't go through the window at a fast food place without them forgetting something. Right. Don't forget the ketchup. Did I mention the ketchup? It, what happens in this fallen realm is that words are not always received. They're, they're, it's amazing how you don't hear what's being said, even though you're staring right at the person as they're talking to you. And then if you do hear it, do you really fully comprehend what's being said? How many times did the disciples pull Jesus aside and say, listen, can you explain that parable to us? So he sits there and he explains it to them. And then the light goes on. And then they say this. Well, why did you tell the whole world? But a minute ago, they didn't understand it. And he had already said the parable. And when it comes into their understanding, they want him to tell the world. And this is what he said. He said, it wasn't given to them. It was given to you. And these are the days that we live in right now. Yes. We live in the days where there is a small amount of people that understand. And how do I know that? How do you know that? Manifestation. It's fruit. Fruit is how you know if somebody understands something. If I move toward you, would that help? Because my fillings are coming out of my mouth. I feel like I have foil in my mouth. Listen, it's always been about words. That's how things started. Everything that you see was made through him, through Jesus Christ, but it was words. Words were formed from the inside of God, and he spoke forth. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the deep, and the manifestation came because the Spirit was there hovering over the, the deep, the deep or the waters. And there were, it was without, without form. It was void. And God spoke. And in heaven, when Jesus spoke... Everything he said what rumbled. Everything had power to complete what he said. There was nothing that he said that he was just kidding. He doesn't joke around because everything he says, he gets. So he's either reinforcing something he's already said and sustaining it by his word, or he is speaking things into existence. So he's either maintaining what he's already said or he's speaking into existence. Everybody follow that. So everything is, is being sustained by his word right now. So I want to talk to you tonight, and we have um, John Ramirez here. He's going to come up and tag team because I'm going to give the devil a black eye. Amen. And then, and then, then John's going to come up and he's going to look at the devil and the, the one eye that's not black, he's going to blacken it. So I'm gonna, amen. Okay, so I, what I want to talk to you about is something that the Lord had given me a few days ago, and he, he discussed something through his spirit with me while I was at work. And he said to me, he, sa he said to me, you're appointed. And 
I thought appointed, 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 okay. Well, when I, I feel like God is saying that I'm appointed, then I feel value. I feel like I count. Yes. I feel like God said, okay, you're the one. You're the one that's going to do this. You're appointed to do this. But this word appointed is actually something that was part of your form in your mother's womb. You were appointed. It's part of the mix that went into forming you. So you're appointed because you have value in heaven and you've been appointed. And everybody that's listening to me now and can hear my voice, you're in this generation for a, a very important reason. And the problem is, is that we don't have ears to hear. Because if we did hear, we would hear amazing things that are being said about us and toward us. There wouldn't be a problem with rejection anymore. No, I mean that. There wouldn't be addiction because you wouldn't need anything because you're appointed. You have value. Now, I'm going to say some things because I can't stand back here and let the body of Christ stay where she is right now. I'll, I don't want the goats. I don't want the tares. I don't want the unwise virgins. I just want the remnant, the people that are ready to go on. You know, if the, if the pillar is moving, if the pillar of cloud is moving, then, then it's time to move on. I can't wait any longer. So I'm going to tell you something that's going to shock most of you. And if it doesn't shock you, I'm going to be very happy. I'm going to be very happy if it doesn't shock you. You see, Jesus, when he taught, you can listen to what he's saying and you can find it in the Old Testament. Did you know that everything he was saying was because he knew the Old Testament? Because the New Testament was being written. He was writing it. So he was taking from the old and he was the new. So he was implementing to the people the new covenant. He was the new covenant, but he was coming in and he was influencing people. He was giving them value that was already inherent within them. He was reaching out in compassion and he was correcting what the discrepancy was between how his father formed man in the beginning and how they ended up now. He was just reaching out and correcting all the time. If someone died and it wasn't time, he would raise them from the dead. If there was an arm missing, he would give them an arm. If there was a demon inside of them, he would drive the demon out. He preached debt cancellation. He preached forgiveness of sin. He preached good news. He had no bad news. Except for the Pharisees. Why? Because they had a form of godliness, but they denied the power of, of God. They had a form. So it's, it's interesting that no one, no one will touch these scriptures I'm going to talk about. Now, in chapter 10 of John, he first, just to set it up, I can't be satisfied with just having a breakthrough tonight. You see, if I go from breakthrough to overthrow, if I go into overthrow, I've gone into dominion, which is permanent. So Jesus, when he came, he wasn't just having a breakthrough. He was through and he was into what we call dominion and domain. That meant that wherever he went, he had the word. And the people gathered around him, but they didn't gather around the Pharisees. So he says this. Now listen to me. In John 10, he says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall 
of the sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. Verse 2, but the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. Okay, so we are supposed to know his voice. He mentioned it several times here and it's just verse 4. Okay, after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. Verse 5, they won't follow a stranger. So why does that happen? Why do people follow a stranger when it says that they're not going to follow a stranger? He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church right now. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand, it says here, what he meant. But what's so hard? It's spiritually discerned. See, we understand it because we're born again. Except for the witches that are here. We welcome the witches. You can come up here. We got seats for you right here by my wife. I know you're here. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. This is what just happened for the last two years. Can you believe I just said that? You got to put pressure on the devil. Yeah, that's good. God is so strong. Our God is so strong. You have to go to his property and kick him off. Jesus went where he went and the devils met him. They said, have you come to torment us before our time? He didn't answer them. Then they said, don't send us out of the area. What are they worried about? What if you go to to their property and you tell them to leave? They have to go. They have to go. There doesn't have to be another disease of the week. There doesn't have to be. I'm telling you, as the lowest, the little toe in the body of Christ, I'm telling you that if we'll agree as touching anything, it shall be done for us. If we'll believe, nothing shall be impossible to us. I'm not backing off. I'm going to keep coming to each city and preaching the good news. I'm going to keep reminding people of what Jesus said. You got to put pressure on the devil. That's the only thing he understands. He doesn't want to sit and talk with you. He wants to devour you. He's looking for someone to devour. Just don't be edible. It's just going to get better. (laughs) 
Make him pay your way. I might even buy a broom company, you know? <laughs> and then, they're, then they have to buy their brooms from me. <laughs> now, I, you laugh, but see, what if God inserts you? Why are you here in this generation? You're here to mess up the party. You're here to foil the enemy's plans. How you do that is you just keep showing up just like Kramer did at the law firm on the show about nothing. He didn't even work there. He just showed up every day for work. They finally fired him. He says, you can't fire me. I don't work here. If you don't know what the show, forget about it. It's, just a, it's a show about nothing. Just like this world seems at times. If Jesus said you have authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, don't you think that means something even if it's the disease of the weak? Yes. Yes. At what point do you realize that God is even greater than any plague that comes near you? That even though a thousand have fallen and 10,000 at your right hand, it shall not come near you. At what point do you grasp that like Jesus did? So Jesus was teaching. And the Pharisees, if you keep going through this chapter 10, I might just do it to irritate the devil. Jesus gets into being the son of God. Well, the Pharisees don't like that. You call yourself being equal with God, we're going to kill you. That's what the whole argument was here, okay? So he starts out with the sheep and the sheepfold, but he gets into some, some wild stuff. In verse 19 of chapter 10 of John, it says, When he said these things, the people were again divided in their opinions about him. Some said he has a demon. And he's out of his mind. I wouldn't say that to Jesus because one day you're going to stand before him when you listen to a man like who wants to listen to a man like that is what people said this doesn't sound like a man possessed by a demon can a demon open the eyes of the blind okay so they're arguing back here okay so in verse 22 Jesus Jesus is in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah the festival of dedication, and he was in the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Colonnade. Verse 24, the people surrounded him and asked, how long are you, you going to keep us in suspense? If you're the Messiah, just tell us. Jesus replied, I've already told you. See, I mean the three foot thing? The words just go like this. This is where we're at right now. So he goes back into this whole thing. The proof is the work I do in my father's name, but you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. Okay, so now he's building on what he just taught about, about the sheepfold, being the shepherd, okay, and not running when the wolves come. Pastors. Okay. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. He just reiterates it. Verse 28, I give them eternal life. They will never perish. Okay, right there is enough. I will never perish is enough to run you the rest of your life. I will never perish. It says that these people that follow me and hear my voice, I know them and they will never perish. Never perish. I'm never going to perish. I'm not going to perish. Yeah, I, yeah my body might, might fall to the side, but I'm, I'm going to continue on forever. I am, I am in your face forever. I'm always going to be this way, even in heaven. 
Did you pray this morning? No. No one can snatch them away from me. This is what Jesus said. Verse 29. My father has given them to me. Whoa. So the father has given you to Jesus. The father ordained you. You're appointed. And he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from my father's hand. The father and I are one. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here it goes. Verse 31. They pick up stones to, to kill him. Okay. Jesus said, at my father's direction, I've done many good works. Which one of these are you going to stone me for? See, he's referring back. I want you to catch this. He's referring back to the manifestation of the father through him. And he's putting that forward all the time. Which one of the good works are you going to stone me for? That my father's working through me were one. Which one of those good works are you going to stone me for? That's how he always presents it. He gets it off of him and he puts it back on the father. And he makes them decide if he is the gate, if he's the door, if he is the Messiah. They have to choose. He makes them have to choose him. And they won't. They replied, we're stoning you not for any good work, but for blasphemy. You, a mere man, claim to be God. Okay, and here's what I want to talk to you tonight that no one else will talk about is verse 34. Everyone's afraid. I was told in theology class, do not talk about this verse. So I'm going to. (laughs) Jesus replied, it is written in your own scriptures that... God said to certain leaders of the people, them, I say you are gods. It's right there. Why would Jesus say that to the Pharisees? Well, he's actually quoting Psalms 82, which we're going to talk about this weekend. Because the devil doesn't want me to talk about it, that's why I want to talk about it. And you know that your scriptures cannot be altered. So, if those people who receive God's message are called gods, small g, why do you call it blasphemy when I say I am the son of God? After all, the Father set me apart and sent me into the world. Don't you believe me? Unless you, I carry out my Father's work. But if I do his work, believe in the evidence of the miraculous works I have done. Even if you don't believe me, then you will know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Once again, they tried to arrest him, but he got away and left. And this is where I would just get my staff to put me in a car and get out of here as quick as possible. Because no one wants to go to these hard scriptures. So what what I do is I go to where it's being quoted, which is even more troublesome because it's Psalms 82. And Psalms 82 can be very troublesome. Verse 1. All you demons, weep right now. Because you have no idea how God made us. If you saw how you were originally made, you would have no problem with Psalms 82. And you would have no problem with what Jesus said to the Pharisees. The reason why everyone has problem with Scripture is because we're looking at it from a fallen state. And I'm not talking about the United States, or any state here. I'm talking about your condition. This is what Satan does not want you to know. 
you, you were made in the image of God and you were part of the children of God and God gave us power to become sons of God. If you want to bring John into it, chapter 1, verse 12, where it says that those who loved him and grasped his teachings, he gave them the power to become sons of God. Why would John say that? Because he knows Psalm 82. He also knows all the scriptures that Jesus talked about. That when you want me to go, because if I go, then the one like me is going to come and he's going to be your helper. He is like me. He's going to be a friend just like I am. But he is going to help you to do the same works that I'm doing. In fact, when he comes, even greater works than these shall you do. That's another hard verse because we can't even do what Jesus did, let alone the greater works. Why? Because of our state that we perceive we're in, which is Romans 7. But we're really in Romans 8. Paul did that as a contrast to show his struggle before he got saved under the law. But why is it that the church, for years, me growing up in it, they could identify with Romans 7? But they hardly talked about Romans 8 because it was like a fantasy land. Okay. Verse 1 of Psalms 82. Now, you can't go back after you hear this tonight, which is why I do it the first night. You can't go back after you hear this. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. Small g. God presides over heaven's court. He announces judgment. All rise, for God now comes to judge, and he convenes heaven's courtroom. He judges every judge. He judges every judge. Did I mention he judges every judge? He's standing in the midst. The word is Elohim. Elohim. Elohim stands in the congregation of El. Singular. Elohim stands in the congregation of El. Singular God. He judges among the gods, plural. How long will you judge? And then he goes into this conversation. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons who are wicked? How long will you hand down unjust decisions? By favoring the wicked. Now, wait a minute. What just happened? We're in the courts of heaven. God is in the midst of the gods. Judging the gods. Don't get nervous. This isn't even the part to get nervous about yet. <laughs> you just look it up in Hebrew, what it says. God has a court and he's standing in the midst and he's judging the judges. And that word Elohim, gods, is also the same word for judges. Thus, he speaks to the Pharisees and says, you were given the word of God and you are judges. Ye are gods. Ye are gods. Elo you, it says, ye are Elohim. Jesus said it. It's in red. Ye are Elohim to whom the word of God was given. Ye are judges. And it makes sense because it says next, why are you not judging the wicked correctly? Why are you allowing them to prosper? Well, why did he always come against the Pharisees? Who warned you of the coming wrath? 
He said, you go halfway around the world to get a convert. When you find one, you make them twice the son of hell you are. You put bondages on people. You're supposed to be taking them off. You want me to keep quoting what he would say to the Pharisees? It was just all the time. Okay, it's because of Psalms 82. They were given the responsibility to enforce, to make just decisions, to bring justice to every situation. Why is this not being taught? That is why Jesus said, whatever you agree, it shall be done. Whatever you forbid on the earth is, is forbidden in heaven. Whatever you loose on the earth is loosed in heaven. Whatever you do, if you forgive sins, they're forgiven. I'm quoting red. It's troublesome, isn't it? But it, it originates here in Psalms 82 and in John 10. Jesus was trying to show you guys are the judges because you were given the word of God and you haven't judged justly. You want to kill me is what Jesus is saying. Why do you want to kill me? I am. <laughs> Jesus was the one standing in the midst of the judges, the gods. Still nervous every time I use that word, aren't you? But you don't understand Adam and Eve. It says, you are given dominion over everything. Everything. How long will you continue to judge unjustly and accept persons that are wicked? Why do you think it is the way it is today? It's because we didn't judge correctly. We didn't enforce justice. And so the wicked are favored now. And they prosper. This is what Psalms 82 is saying. Oh, it's just starting to get warm in here. How long will you hand down unjust decisions by favoring the wicked? This is God speaking to the judges in his court in verse 1. I've only gone through verse 2 already. He's, he's right there in his court saying, why have you allowed? You, what about you? You. Defend. Oh, here it goes. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Defend the defenseless. Verse 4. Your duty is to deliver the poor and the powerless and liberate them from the grasp of the wicked. He's still talking about verse 1, judging the gods. And Jesus is quoting this to the Pharisees, telling them, why are you not taking bondages off people? Why are you putting them on people? Verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. They've shifted. They're not true anymore. Even the foundations, it says it right here. You continue in your darkness and your ignorance. Society, another translation said, is shaken to the core. So Jesus is quoting this to the Pharisees. He knows this whole chapter. Okay, verse 6. Didn't I commission you as judges, saying, you are like gods, since you judge on my behalf? I'm reading Psalms 82 here. I'm not. But see, Jesus, it sounds like Jesus when he spoke in John. He said, you are, my, you are like the sons of the Most High. You're my representatives. But yet you're going to die like mere men.
Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit the nations. Rise up, O God, and judge the earth. All the nations belong to you. And that's the end of the chapter. Why did Jesus say that to the Pharisees? Because they were the ones who had been given the word of God through Moses. Given supernaturally by angels. They were given and they were supposed to enforce justice and righteousness. And instead, their country was invaded by Rome. So Jesus is taking what he saw in heaven from Psalms 82 because he was in the midst of the gods. Now, I'm not talking about pantheon. I'm not talking about Mormonism. So please don't write me. Because I'm talking about the 24 elders. Because they're not human and they're not angel. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. There were beings until Moses came that kept order on the earth. One of them was Melchizedek. But there was a lot of them. Melchizedek was one like unto the Son of God, but he wasn't the Son of God. Melchizedek didn't have a birth certificate or a death certificate, just like one of our presidents. But no one could explain who he was. He just set up his rule in Salem, which became Jerusalem, when God came in. So there's a ruling class of beings that you know nothing of. You know nothing of them. You know Michael, you know Gabriel, you know some cherubs. You never met a seraphim because they don't leave the throne. The cherubs, the cherubim. There's all these classes, but there's, there's much more up there. I got to say it. We are the ruling class. Yeah. Human beings have been purchased and they've been given the authority. Where did Jesus say that he had given the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions to anyone else? Hebrews says, when did God ever call an angel his son? When did he ever say to him, do this, do that? No, he made us his sons. And the angels will serve us in the next reign of Christ. They will do what we say. Right now, they're sent to minister for us who are going to inherit till salvation. They hearken unto the voice of the Lord. They have been sent to minister for us. Now, when Jesus spoke this to the Pharisees, it was throwing gasoline on a little fire. It was already there. And he had to go to Psalms 82. Why? Because the responsibility was on the Pharisees. And they were not doing what they had been asked to do. So Jesus went out from the synagogues and he cast out devils outside. He went to territories and he drove out devils. Okay, did he not tell his disciples to do the same thing? Did he not have trouble with them at times where the devils wouldn't listen? But then he had to do it and then he had to say, listen, you guys need to shape it up. You might want to skip your happy meals tomorrow and fast a little bit. And these come out by prayer and fasting. He didn't change the mode of operation just because it didn't work. 
He, he said it always works. He cast the devil out. And they're like trying to figure out why it didn't work. This is what we do all the time. We try to figure out why it's not working. But we have to go back with what, with what was said. But if we go back to the origin of why Jesus had an issue with the Pharisees, it was because they had set themselves up as God, but they were not judging correctly. They were not discerning and doing it justly. They were not feeding the poor. They were not taking care of the fatherless, the orphans. They were not bringing justice. They weren't bringing bicycles and, and instruments. They weren't feeding people food. But they were charging them a temple tax to come to a seminar. So I'm not speaking to the people that can't hear. I'm speaking to the people that can hear. I'm speaking to the people that want to do something about it and want to own it and say, you know what? It doesn't work because it's my fault. There's something inside of you that has to do with eternity that will not let go of God's word because you started with God's word. You were formed in your mother's womb because God spoke you into existence. Everything that you encounter down here is to take away from your destiny. It's to take away from your origin. It's to take away from your value. Everything is designed to take your value away, to keep you in debt, to keep you feeling behind the curve all the time, to where nothing works. And then you side with it with your mouth. And then you start to steer because, see, now you're hijacked by the devil. You're hijacked. You're hijacked. If he gets your tongue, he's got you. You become a remote control. Don't worry about the zombies. Just worry about what you say out of your mouth. Everybody's waiting for the zombies. Just turn the news on. There's several speaking every day. But as Christians... You do not allow the devil to have your tongue. You do not speak what he's saying. You speak what God's saying. What's he saying? Enforce justice. Enforce righteousness. Defend the, the powerless, the widow, the orphan, the poor. Feed the poor. Help the poor. Do something for someone else. Reinforce value in someone else. The number one enemy in the world today is the rejection that every human being encountered that is inherent from the fall. When we fell, we were rejected by God and we were cast out of the garden. And what is in us, that curse that we fight, is rejection. But Paul said, we are accepted in the blood. We are no longer orphans, as it says in Romans 8.15. We have the spirit of adoption, the spirit of full acceptance. All of heaven is standing right now at attention as the word of God is being spoken here. And I have been sent as a judge, as one who is in the counsel of God to speak justice and righteousness and to enforce God's word. That is all of our job, 
That is everyone's job, not just with your words, but with your actions. You take care of each other. You find out what people need. And if you, if you think that you've met their needs, there's one need that everyone needs. They need affirmation that they're not rejected. Amen. They need to know they're accepted. They need to know that they have value. You have to discern this, that every person, because of the fall, every human being feels and fights rejection. But through practice of the word of God, through being diligent every day, purposing that you're going to walk out your calling with fear and trembling, you will discern that everything you need for life and godliness is inside of you. Right. And I have stood, I have stood in places that I cannot talk about. I have stood in that council. And all of you belong there too. I just got to actually stand there. And when I stood there, I felt the authority of who I was because I was appointed. I was appointed to always manifest God's word. Not just to speak it, but to manifest it. To have him work with me. Why did God choose Dalton? Why do all the witches want to live here? Why are there so many covens? Why are there certain places on the earth that the devil has congregated? Well, it's the same way with the promised land. All of the giant races migrated up into Canaan so that when Joshua took over for Moses, he had to nail all of them the whole way up into Jerusalem. He was fighting giant races. He was extinguishing them. King David, same thing. He was going through territories and routing those hybrid races. He was not allowed to let any of them live, nor the livestock. He wasn't allowed, it was so vile, some of them, that it wasn't allowed to even keep the plunder. He had to burn it. It was that vile. He had to tear down all the high places. I wonder how many churches would survive that. If you start tearing down statues, images, I'm not going to cut your grass. I'm just tiptoeing through it right now. But somebody's going to have to plow it. And like Jeff Foxworthy said, you, you might be a redneck if you cut your grass and you find a car there. <laughs> so what's in your yard? Well, you might have to mow it. But that's what we do. We go places and things change. Why? Because we mow the lawn. And if something's not supposed to be there, it starts spouting off. Well, don't send me out of the area. Well, thanks for reminding me. Go. Well, don't torment us before your time. Well, go to torment. Anything else? Oh, don't mention that name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, the, the blood. What, what's the deal about the blood? Why is the blood? Oh, they go crazy about the blood. Why? Because that is what defeated them. Why? Because God gave Mary, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. Jesus was formed in Mary's womb by the Holy Spirit. But Jesus had blood. And that blood was spotless. It was perfect. It didn't have any genetic defect. Amen. 
He never got sick. He never saw a syringe. <laughs> Didn't need any problem. There was nothing wrong with his immune system. So he was perfect. So his blood sets it all straight. His name sets it all straight. Okay, but he's gone now. He's in heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God. He sent the Holy Spirit. He said he would. But he said, if he comes and when he comes, you're going to do even greater things than what I'm doing. You're going to do what I'm doing, but you're going to do greater. Okay, that includes the disease of the weak. I can't stop preaching the gospel just because bad things happen. I can't stop believing. My dad passed away. I don't, I don't stop believing in raising the dead or, or praying for the sick. I will still pray for the sick. I will still raise the dead. I will still drive out devils. Because it's the gospel. It has nothing to do with what you think it has everything to do with what God knows. He stood in the council of the gods and he judged them. And he said, why have you allowed this to happen on the earth? And now the foundations of the earth are out of course. Remember what I read that? That's where we're at right now. So you have people that have had 47 years to fix problems. <laughs> Isn't it time that some of you step up as a judge and hear the counsel of God and judge justly? What we need is righteousness and justice to reign. This is the body of Christ. Now, when we couldn't travel, we weren't allowed to congregate, except for a couple different states, one of them here, I would just come, and I would just do it every month if I had to. But if not, I would do it for my studio. Faithfully, you watched me every week. I'd have another seminar. And I, I told the devil, and it, on the 13th one, I said, I'm just going to keep going. And then everything started to open up a little bit more. And it just got wider and wider. Why? Because I was in the council of the Almighty. And I heard him say, judge justly. Take up the case of the poor and the fatherless, the powerless. Take up their case. There is no way a devil can even stay in this room. Because all of you all of you that believe and adhere to the teachings of Jesus, John chapter 1 verse 12 says, in, it says right there, he gave them the power to become sons of God. So essentially, if you are a child of God, then people might want to pick up a stone. Why? Because you pick a fight when you step out and say, I'm going to enforce the council that is in heaven right now, that Jesus stood there in the midst of, of God and judged the gods, those who were judges. And then he pointed, he did that, and then he came down from Psalms 82 to John 10, and he said, ye are gods to whom the word of God was given. He goes and he does the same thing because it is a fulfillment. Psalms 82 is fulfilled in John 10. He points right at them and he says, ye are gods and you're accountable because you did not judge justly. They wanted to kill him because the demons wanted to kill him. Because Jesus stood in that council, and now he's standing on the earth. 
But he did say that you are going to do the same things and even greater things shall you do. Well, what would that be? Well, what would be the greater things? Well, it's just starting to get complicated enough to where you will have to do the greater things just to live. Do you get it? The atmosphere around you changes and it becomes the greater works. You didn't have to do anything. Is the game over? At, if you're in a, a, a beginning quarter of a football game and there's somebody grabs the ball, and it, somebody grabs the ball and it's intercepted and the other team gets it, is the game over? Why? Because there's still a chance. You still have time. You have time. So what you don't do is let them, you just don't let them score. You don't let them capitalize on the misfortune. But even if they did score, you still have. So you still have a whole another, another, if you're in the first quarter, you still have three more. Plus the, you know, the four hours of halftime in commercials. <laughs> to sit there and figure it out. You got plenty of time within this realm to work it out. However, you don't want to be lazy like a lot of teams are, and want to try to win the game in the last five minutes on the clock. Then all of a sudden, everybody is diligent. And you're seeing stuff that's like, well, why can't you do that in the second quarter? I'll tell you why. It's because of the human part of us. We don't discern. We don't hear. We don't do anything until we're forced to do it. But what if we applied that same pressure to the devil? What if we always put pressure on him to where he has to perform? So he either puts up or he, he gets kicked out. Put it, put it up. You know, I stood, I stood on that hill where, where the showdown happened with, with the altar and Ryan and I were there. We were standing right there and looked out over when the prophet said, you know what, go ahead and wet that wood. You could see the spring where they got the water. You could see the altar. And the, and the prophet said, put up or shut up. You know, perhaps your God's going on vacation. And he said, okay, you know what, I've had enough. You guys are cutting yourself. You're embarrassing me. Stand back. Go get some water. It's right there. I could, we could see it where it happened. And God answered by fire. And the power. There were only two, can you believe that? Only two powerful places where I felt like it was authentic. One of them was there. I felt the power of God. And one of them was on the Mount Olives. The, the power of God was so strong that I was constantly prophesying. I couldn't stop. Every time we would stop and pray, prophecy would come forth. The Lord would be saying how he's going to touch down. It's going to split the Kidron Valley. The power of God was so strong on Mount Carmel. It wasn't strong in the upper room because it was brand new stone. <laughs> It wasn't the place. It's just like somebody's birth certificate. It was brand new. He was born the same year I was, at 61. So. Do you discern where you're at right now? Do you discern who you are? Because the appointment that's been given to you is that you've been trusted. You need to find out who you are. You need to know who you are because the devil knows who you are. The devil knows who you are and he knows if you know. And I'm telling you, he ain't going to tell you who you are. He's going to hope you just stay in rejection. You stay addicted. The power.
power of God is in the driving out of the enemy. The power of God is in meeting the needs of the poor and the needy. It's in helping people that can't pay you back. It's in being the answer. It's being in knowing who you are. Come on now. What's hard for me is that I know that in that council, in standing in that council, I am at home. It's where I belong. I was never meant to fall. I was never meant to be in sin. God formed man in his image. He never meant for him to be in the state he's in. But he worked this amazing salvation. We should be preaching that gospel all the time, even if it's without words by our action. We should be living in that authority. Are you ready for a showdown? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Man, I just, want, I just want to sit there and keep taking it in, you know. I'm like, that's the big brother, I'm the little brother, amen. So, so you know, it, it's an amazing thing when, you, when, 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 when Brother Kevin speaks to you. He's not speaking to you from a place of the natural. He's speaking from a place of the supernatural, amen. You see, we, we've, been, we've been called to walk in the supernatural, amen. But the church has poisoned us. The church has contaminated us. To walk in the natural, to walk in, not walk in the spirit, man, but walk in your soul. And your soul can't defeat the devil. And it's the spirit, man, because we, everything we do, we worship in spirit and in truth. Understand? So the foundation, it, it, the foundation that is laid here tonight is a foundation that can't be shaken. It can't be moved. It cannot be shaken, cannot be moved. So he just laid a foundation for you that if you stand on it, the devil can't shake you. He can't move you. <laughs> Understand? It's, it's a foundation that is a, it's a forever foundation. It's not a temporary one. That's why in, in John, in, in, when he was talking about John, he talked about, he talked about uh, Psalm 32. He talked he talk about, talk about a supernatural place. Well, you can be in a supernatural place, walk in a supernatural anointing, walk in supernatural truth. Because the truth will set you free. But the church is operating in facts. Facts can be changed. So when I walk in that supernatural place, you see, I came from a place. See, I came from a place of where the Pharisees lived. Religion. The devil loves religion. I did it for 25 years. You see, the devil loves religion because religion brings components. So the religion brings components. So, so when you walk, this is what, this is, it's a system. 666, a system. It's a system. The devil juice is a system. The vaccine. It's a system. Everything that in the demonic, everything the demonic and the religion, they walk together, they're parallel. They walk together, it's a parallel system. That's why you have to ask yourself, are you part of the system? See, the church is part of a system. That's why the church is in bed with the devil. And what was laid here tonight is a foundation that I can't be moved. I can't be shaken because it's a foundation where I was created to live in. God has created me to live in a foundation before the foundations of the earth. And this is the amazing thing about it. It is I don't operate from a system. Because I was living in a system before BC, before I came to Christ. But when Christ came for me. He took me out of the system. He took me out of the system because Christ was born outside of the system. Christ died high and wide outside of the system. 
That's why he's untouchable, unmovable, unshakable. And the church is supposed to be that. We are, but, but we are adopted to a system. A system is just a bunch of rules. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't talk this way. You can't walk that way. You can't do it. You can't cast out devils. The devil is a liar. People saying, oh, John is a great pretender. He's faking it for 21 years. He's still part of the devil. Well, who am I casting out your mama from? And your daddy. Because I don't live in the system. I live in a supernatural place. Because I believe like Paul. Paul, God has called me to fight the good fight. I believe in Mark 16. said, by these signs. By these signs. By these signs. I don't care if I'm in Japan. I can cast out Japanese devils. I don't care if I'm in the Caribbean. I can cast out Caribbean devils. I don't care if I'm in Puerto Rico. I cast out Puerto Rican devils. I don't care where I'm at because I don't work and live in the system. So we, 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 we being bought, we, we being released tonight is for you to come out to a place of a supernatural place. You're walking in a supernatural God. God is a supernatural God. He's amazing. He, he, he sits in the circle of the earth. He's supernatural God. And if you, can, if you can touch and agree with him, you can walk out of the system. You can do all things to Christ who gives you the strength. I don't care how sick you are. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you're going through. You know, you can, you can defeat that devil. You can defeat that devil because God has given you. The, you see, the devil, has, the, devil, the devil has power, but he has no authority. See, you can have power. You don't have no authority. You ain't move nothing. You can have power, but if you don't have authority, you can't command nothing. That's why when we, when we go to places, witches show up. They're jealous. <laughs> it's okay. You can't touch this. Because if God's with me, who could be against me? And if God bless me, who can curse me? So eat that. I can teach you. I can give you some recipe and they still won't work. Because, you see, I see this is, this, is, this, is what, this is the whole thing. I've seen too much in Jesus to doubt. I've seen too much in him to walk in unbelief. Unbelief is a system. It's a system. You can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. It, it, it's, it's a system. So, so I don't operate. When I fight the good fight, when I fight spiritual warfare, I'm not fighting you from a system. I'm not fighting you from the earth round. I don't live in the earth round. I might walk in the earth round, but I live in the supernatural. I live in the third heaven. So when I hit the devil from there like a piñata on the Mexican party, candy come out of his pocket, I'm hitting you from a place of authority. Come on, people. I'm hitting you from a place of authority. I have authority. I have authority. I can cast out devil. I can, I can lay hands on the sick. I can tell demons where to go because I, I don't live in the system. And the church has contaminated you, has put you in a box so you can live there and depend on the Pharisees. The Jesus had Pharisees. We have them today too. Just turn on the Christian channel. They talk about the devil, but they don't confront the devil. Because see, you got to be one of these. You got to be one of these. Gilligan can't cast out the devil. See, the church lives in Gilligan's Island. They have a game plan, but they don't get off the island. I love Gilligan, don't get me wrong. And I love the skipper. But I don't go to that church. I 
I never signed up for the love boat. I love brother Isaac. He was a great bartender. But when I signed up, we signed up for a battleship. To dismantle, to break, to destroy, to annihilate. To make Jesus, pri Jesus Christ proud that he picked you. I have a saying, I'm doing life in Jesus. I want no parole. I'm on death row. And the day I go home with the Lord, because I don't die. The day I go home with the Lord, and I close my eyes, I made Jesus Christ proud that he picked me. And hell will rejoice that I left the battlefield. Because we've been called to be armed and dangerous. See, if you receive, if you receive in your spirit this powerful teaching, it is to bring you to another level. It's not only edifying, but it's to promote you, to equip you. To, you understand? To equip you to another level of spiritual warfare. Listen, if, I don't know about, about the church at large, but we're in a fight. We are in a fight. We are in a fight today like we never seen it before. We are on a spirit. We are on the. We I call this spiritual warfare front line ministry. This is what Kevin's about. A spiritual warfare front line. We we're not in the kitchen. We're not doing brownies. <laughs> because in the end of your story, you're gonna have to give Jesus an account. What you did with the time I gave you on the earth. He's gonna ask you that. Did you glorify my son, Jesus Christ? What will be your answer? Because in heaven, there's many books. And every book got a name on it. What would your book say about you and about me? We gave the devil a free pass? I don't think so. Did we get witches a free pass? I don't think so. I even challenged Madeline Manson a few times. I tell him, I go to your church. You preach the first half hour and I preach the second. <laughs> you let me know when we we'll do this. Because, you see, I've seen too much in Jesus. To fear. To doubt. To walk in unbelief. God didn't call me to be a chicken coop Christian. I don't peck. I fly like an eagle. You with me? I fly like an eagle. Untouchable, unmovable, above every demonic activity. Above every demonic frequency. About every demonic witches. I'm not, a, I'm not even worried about the witches that are here tonight. You picked the wrong church to come to, Jack. You can either run to your car or run to the altar. Understand? Because you see, this, this is what I, I, it is amazing that when you walk with God, when you walk with him, there has to be alignment. You have to touch and agree to walk with him, to live for him, to, 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 to be in communion with him. I, I, I have such a love, a love relationship with God. Understand, I've given up everything. Even my salsa dancing. <laughs> I've give, I given up everything. Everything. Just to walk with him. I've given up a daddy that I was able to see for 25 years to follow someone that I don't even know what he looked like. It's amazing how, 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 how in, I, was, I was saying earlier today that we only see Jesus by faith. The demons see them as a reality because they know they've seen them before. And that's what the devil is trying to take your faith. Because if I take your faith, you won't see him. 
if I disarm you, see, I don't care if the devil takes my car. I don't care if he takes this and that. But I'm going to hold on to my faith. Because without my faith, then, then I'm, the devil can move me. See, the devil can hit me, but I'm still in the same spot, baby. I don't give up territory. He can move. He can hit me. In, in, he hit me in January. Messed up my eyesight. I'm back, though. Yeah. He, the devil hit my family, and my sister passed away December 31st, 2020. 29 years old. But I'm still here. You see, when I lost my eyesight, I was sitting on the plane on JFK for five and a half hours, 20, 80 vision. That means you see, all you see is the big E. But I had 2020 in the spirit. And I went to California. I cast out more devils of 2080. I don't even know what the guy looked like in front of me. He was blurred. But it's, it's the anointing. It's the anointing. It is the anointing. See, God will not give the anointing to lazy Christians. So to walk in the spirit is to understand the God you serve, understand the scriptures, understand the foundation you stand on. We don't stand on, qu on quicksand. We don't shake and bake. We don't get migraines. We give migraines to the enemy. So, so are you convinced tonight? I mean, what a powerful teaching. What an anointing. I mean, I was like, don't pick me. Don't, don't give me the mic. Keep talking. <laughs> because hey, yesterday, we were, we, yesterday we were in someone's house. And Brother Kevin was teaching some stuff that I never heard of. Not even the church. 21 years. 21 years in the church. 21 years in the church. I never heard that kind of teaching. It has so much revelation. So much, it was so much revelation and prophetic. It was the teaching that he was giving. That I was like, it was, it, it was the teaching was so good and the brownies. I mean, we, I, was, I was in the third heaven. <laughs> you know how Puerto Rican people are. We eat for free. We don't care. It, it, it is, we need revelation today. I used to see. You know, I say one more thing before I give it to my big brother. 1999, I went to hell. That's how I got saved. There was no choir. There was no track. There was no preacher. It was just come out of my body and went to hell and came back. And in March 11, 2019, I died in my apartment. And I was leaving my body. I wasn't going to miss my daughter. I miss my daughter. Oh, what's she going to say when her daddy died? No, I wasn't going to miss my mom. My mom is my hero. I wasn't going to miss her either. When I left my body and I was leaving, I saw my body laying there. And the only thing that I said, I don't think it was my words. I think the Holy Spirit put it in my mouth. I said, Lord, I'm so disappointed you're taking me home early. If you would have left me, I would have done so much more for you. And he put me right back into my body. And I kept that promise. I kept that promise. I've written two books. I don't eat courses. I cast out devils. I, don't, I travel. I, do, I, I mean, I'm on Delta, right? And I got, I'm like a diamond status. Puerto Rican don't got diamond status in Delta. <laughs> we better get on. <laughs> I got all these things because I'm just one. To do so much more for him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the amazing thing is like how God teamed me up with Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. That is a supernatural moment. That's a book right there. <laughs> how God can take two people from different walks of life from both sides of the spectrum and bring them together. Yeah. To do damage to the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about not late, tear it up. We're talking about beat it up. Take it apart because the kingdom of darkness works like the Pharisee. Patterns and cycles are repeat. The kingdom of darkness, like religion, patterns and cycles are repeat. 
Same devil dressed up in a suit, but old system. Old systems, but dress up differently. That's why we need ACC eyes to see what God is trying to show us. Because, you see, the devil is a sign to one thing. He has a demon sign to take the words away from you. So they'll fall to the ground. And they will, he has either take the words from you or he'll distort the word. So you won't be able to get the revelation of what's being preached tonight. Because if revelation hits your spirit, the devil's in trouble. Because revelation brings promotion. And promotion brings maturity. And it brings a greater anointing. And a greater responsibility. So you can walk in it. Because we've been called to walk in a place that demons tremble. Man, I hope, I hope, man, I pray you receive that in your spirit. Don't let the devil steal the words tonight. Don't let the devil distort the teaching tonight. Because that's what the enemy is good at. That's why the church is all jacked up. We teach a new age. New age. Like Kevin said, we don't mention the blood no more. We don't mention the cross anymore. We don't even baptize people. We don't even do discipleship. I mean, this here, this here is unheard of. Teaching you, equipping you, and sending you out. But you know what the, you know what the warriors thing is doing? I said this last thing. They're just making you an arrow in the quiver of God so he can use you. God has a quiver full of arrows that when he pulled them, he pulled them out and he aimed to the enemy's camp. It's the, it is over. Because we don't miss. We hit targets. And we bring down regions. And we bring down principalities. And we shut first and second heaven. And we take over territory. And we, take, we break down demonic altars in every region. And after all that says done, one thing just happened. We set the captives free for Jesus. Okay. All right, so that's the introduction. Now, now if you'll turn to your study guide, no. We're going we're gonna to meet back at 9. And we're going to start at 9 in the morning. And uh, you all have your study guide. And uh, I want you to reflect tonight on your way home and when you get home. I want you to reflect on the fact that you cannot explain to anyone, really, what the born-again experience is. You can't really explain it because it's something that happens that is not seen. It happens inside of a person, they become a new creation. The beginning of your life is not just when you're born. The beginning of your life is when you're born again. This is what Jesus spoke to Nicodemus about. He was a Pharisee. He was a, I, I believe he was a tax collector. But anyway, the, I believe he was a Pharisee, right? All right, so it was hard for him to understand that. So Jesus said this. He said, listen, you don't see the wind, but you can see the trees moving. And you know that the wind is there. He said, it's the same way with the Spirit. You don't see the Spirit, but you see the results of the Spirit. This is the born-again experience. This is where it starts, but that is not where it ends. You have the beginning of the new creation. Then you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. In the book of Acts, everywhere that the Spirit fell, they spoke in tongues. There was only one occasion where it doesn't say that they did, but it's inferred. All the other times that the Holy Spirit fell, they spoke in tongues. There is no place that it says that tongues has stopped. It's, they said it will stop when we reach perfection. And I haven't met anybody but Jesus. That's perfect. So... The Spirit's going to still cause us to be baptized 
in the spirit and in fire. Okay, this is part of the process. So you can't, I want you to think about this. You cannot explain the born again experience. So people are going to ridicule you because you can't even explain to them that they need to be born again. You can't tell them how, how it works. You, you have to tell them they must be born again. They must be born of the spirit, not just born of the flesh. Okay, this is the entrance, but it is a spiritual thing. Paul said in second, the second chapter of Corinthians that a spiritual person cannot be understood by a carnal person. Because they do not have the Spirit of God. It says that they don't know Him and they can't understand spiritual things. They're spiritually discerned. So you're going to be different from the world and they're going to ridicule you anyway because of what Paul said. The Spirit is not understood and it cannot be seen. He cannot be seen. So I want you to think about that because you need to go forward now. They already know you're crazy. <laughs> you already don't fit in. And we've seen it for years where the church has tried to fit in. And look where it got us in the last year and a half. We were powerless against something that happens every four years. It's just from another animal. It's either bird or cow, and now it's bat. Maybe the zebra will get a chance next time. No, we're just, we're going to stop it. Okay. Spiritual, spiritual activity. That's what I want you to think about. God started this with you because you were a spirit. You were put into a body and you have a soul. When you were born again, you became new, a new creature, a new creation, Okay, then when the spirit came upon you, he endowed you with power. That word, according to John, is not just the dunamis power. It is the power, which is the word authority. He gives you authority to be sons of God. So we're focusing on that dunamis power. But we're not walking in the character The character is what the devil looks at. The devil looks at you and he knows if you are empowered from on high because you know your authority and he won't mess with you. It's a spiritual thing. So I'm going to release you. I want you to think about this tonight. The demons know if you know they know if you walk in authority and they will not mess with you. It started with a spiritual experience of being born again. It was completed by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The church was formed when the Spirit of God came. On the day of Pentecost, the church was formed. It grew and grew and grew and grew. We are all one in the spirit. We are different in the flesh. We are different in the soul. But we are all one in the spirit. We need to concentrate on the spirit. Because then we will see the similarities and not the differences. And the devil will not fight you in the spirit. You think that because you think that spiritual warfare is wrestling with a demon in the aisle. But spiritual warfare, according to Paul, if you want to bring the apostle into it, he's hoping you do. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay, so they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Okay, to the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah, warfare. And that's where we stop. He said, he said pulling down of strongholds. Then he says, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ 
anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, doctrine. The knowledge of God. Doctrine is not a bad word. Bringing it into captivity, that means arresting it, handcuffing it. To the obedience of Christ, that's warfare, according to Paul. Anyway, can I have some water real quick? <coughs> okay, not quick, slow then. <laughs> there we go. I got it. Now, in heaven, you're going to find this out. I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to... I'm going to I'm going to, I'm going to give, you the, give you the secret now. You're going to find out that you were supposed to be in control down here. <clears throat> you were supposed to be in control down here. You have a will, and you were supposed to put your foot down, and you were supposed to have Pentecost. You're going to find out that the devils were so glad that you didn't address them. Do you want to find this out or do you want to just listen to me now? Do, you, there's, a, there's a remorse that comes on that day when you receive your rewards. There's a remorse. When you find out that everything in red in your Bible is absolutely true. When you find out that the fake news was playing in your mind and not just on your TV. You had fake news playing on your mind. It wasn't true. So go home tonight and think about this. We need to have more than a snack spiritually. Like right now, right now, you, you might not have seen it, but I was just, just right now, I was baptized in fire. Fire came from behind and above me and hit me, and I am on fire right now. And I did nothing except stand where I'm supposed to stand in the Lord. And it affects this whole building. It affects this whole place. It affects this city forever, this town. And it affects this state. I don't know of any other high place to go to. I've taken them all out. I've gone as far as I can go. I have gone to all your high places in this state and I've taken communion and I've taken back the property. Not one devil rose his ugly head. Not one peep out of anybody. Just took communion and, and just said, God, you know, you can have your guide stones back because that granite was never supposed to be used for that profane thing. So it's, it returns to the earth. It means nothing. It means nothing. There is no power in it. Where the witches meet, there's no power there. There's no power there. We've already gone to all the places. I, if you know more, we'll go, but I don't know of any others. When we went to the guide stones, there wasn't one evil presence. There was not one peep out of a devil. It was open heaven. The, the broadcast extended twice as long as I wanted to do it. Why? Because the power of God was so strong. There was no devils there. There wasn't even a little white flag where he was. There was nothing there. It was open heaven. Why? Because... This is God's state, and this is God's property, and you're God's people. What are you afraid of? So think about it. Something spiritual happened to you that you were born again. Something spiritual happened to you when you received the Holy Spirit, and you allowed him to have your tongue. James says that the tongue is the rudder for your life. So guess what? The Holy Spirit gets your tongue. And he speaks in tongues. Don't you think that it's amazing that he is your autopilot? That the Holy Spirit is controlling your tongue. It's perfect. 
Well, what is he wanting to say through you? It's a spiritual exercise. So we prayed in tongues at the high places. And we prophesied and we took communion and we got back in our transportation and came home at the speed of sound. Instead of three and a half hours, it was 14 minutes. And if you look at me that way again, I will do it again. But I don't have to do it again. But when are we going to start doing the same thing in our own house? In our own family and say, you know what? It's a new sheriff in town. You take your authority. You know what's so funny is, is, is every Christian should be like this. I'm going to be talking this way when I pass away. I believe this no matter what. Amen? Amen. The fire of the altar of God is upon you. This isn't a gimmick. Right now, the fire of the altar of God that Isaiah saw. The fire, the fire that's on the wings of the seraphim that are flying above God right now and saying, holy, holy, holy. It's in this room and it's upon you. Why? Because you have been appointed. You have been appointed to be judges in this generation. To judge correctly. Stand up. Minstrels, you can go to your positions. With the same authority that the prophet called down the fire on the altar. I called down the fire on us. The fire of God. To consume us as a living sacrifice right now. This isn't a gimmick. The fire, I can see it on all of you. All of you are called the mighty ones of the Most High. You're all mighty ones. You're all mighty ones. King David wants to meet you. He longed to see this day. King David longed to see this day where warriors would address the enemy. with the sword of the spirit, with weapons of righteousness in our left hand and our right hand. The fire of the Lord Jesus Christ from the altar of God be upon you. Somebody prophesy, come on now, I can't hear you. You prophesy from the fire. Si si gole bere dresce to si giri bara lani bara lama ni rindro ni ni gana monte ni kole mana dresci no sa e si gole bere lama re dresci to la vagiva si si gole bere dresci jo jo go kiva lama ero e kalamani lozi e si no no vendera shaja unstoppable is the body of Christ unstoppable are the redeemed of the Lord unstoppable is the church the gates of hell cannot prevail against her. Fire, fire from the altar. I command every evil spirit to desist in your maneuver against the body of Christ right now. I command every devil, you go in Jesus' name. I said, go in Jesus' name. Leave Dalton. Leave Georgia. I break your power. Take a coal from the altar and put it on your mouth that your lips may be cleansed and you may speak from the other side, from the power of the heavenly realms. Speak, cleanse. Father, cleanse the lips of your people right now. Touch their lips with the fire, the coal of the altar of God right now. Fire!
Yeah. Yeah. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit right now. Be high and lifted up, Lord. Be high and lifted up. I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. His train filled the temple. His train fills this temple. His glory fills your temple. Tongues of fire. The Lord is speaking to us about the cleansing fire of the Holy Ghost. That's the baptism in fire. The baptism in fire and the Holy Ghost. Lift up your voice. Pray in other tongues. Let him cleanse your life. There's an open door right now to go through, praying in tongues. Let him cleanse you. Shama talamote, lapa tokose, shapa tasoto, rebe, rebe, rama hase, hosotoso. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for cleansing our lives. We thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. For the infilling. Oh, Shanananene. We lift you high. We lift you high. We lift you high. You are high and lifted up. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come, who was and is and is to come. We thank you, Lord, you're coming again. We give you the glory. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Yes, was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy. Hala hala korashe. Oda kalase. Thank you, Lord. Yes, you're holy, Lord. You're holy. You're holy. You're holy. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Be free. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah.
Take away my sin and shame Nothing but the blood of Jesus Nothing but the blood of Jesus What could cleanse me white as snow and make me whole? Nothing but the precious blood of Jesus Oh, the blood of Jesus We thank you for your blood Oh, we thank you for your blood We thank you for your blood Poured out for us You would do it all again just for me That's how much you love us That's how much you love us You'd come and do it all again Just for me, just for me Cause you see me and you know me You hear me, you see me You know me from the inside out The outside and you don't miss a thing You don't miss a thing So I'll give you everything I am Cause you gave me everything you are Perfect trade-off I don't deserve it but you gave it all anyway So we give you everything we are Holding nothing back from you, God Holding nothing back from you So we'll give it all Cause you gave your all We'll give you all, cause you gave it all. We'll give it all, cause you gave it all. We'll give everything to you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for.
praise, praise the Lamb, lift him
praise We will never get tired We will never grow weary We will never get bored of bringing you praise Highest praise, 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 highest praise into the No higher 
Stop.